Oh, it's just you. I'm sorry, I'm just getting ready for a pandemic flu. No baby. This is Praxis Prepper. I want to talk a little bit today about the new H7N9 strain of bird flu going around Asia. Is it something that we should be concerned about? What am I doing to prepare for it? What maybe should you be doing to prepare for it? Before I get into that, though, I wanted to talk just really quickly about, like, where are all these new virus strains coming from? Like, what's the deal? Like, is there some mad scientist in the lab trying to destroy the world? Some people say that. Um, you know, why are all these things being generated, and why so many lately? And uh, the reason for that is really comes down to agriculture. Uh, before the advent of agriculture and uh, large populations of people because of it, um, uh, you didn't have a lot of these like you know measles and mumps and whooping cough and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of that stuff uh, was generated um, when people started uh, getting close with animals, uh, you know, milking them, eating them. Uh, Etc. And the idea is that the, a lot of these dangerous viruses are being generated randomly in nature all the time, uh, but if there's not a human there to receive it, uh, if you don't have humans living in close proximity with the, the non-human animals, then, um, then that virus doesn't go anywhere. Just poof, you know, short-lived. It would have been a horrible thing that could have killed billions, but um, didn't happen to get into a person, and there weren't billions to spread it around, so uh, it didn't end up happening. It's kind of like uh, the movie The Ring, the videotape. Well, I finally watched it, and I don't really see the... Oh. Phone's ringing. Um, okay, hold on. One... Hello? Hello? Is this a fax machine? <sighs> Hello? <sighs> Amateur. <laughs> the videotape can be sitting there, the, the terrible one that kills you if you watch it, it can be sitting there, but if there's no actual person that interacts with it, it doesn't do any harm. And it's the same thing with a virus. You could have the most lethal virus in the world, but if there's nobody around to receive it, um, or if it's just in some small animal population somewhere and nobody ever interacts with them, um, that, that virus capable of killing billions isn't going to kill anybody because it's just it's not getting into them. So the more you have people and animals together, the more opportunity you have for crossover. Um, <coughs> so that brings me back to the H7 and 9 strain that we're looking at right now. Is, it, is, this, is this the one? Um, and no, it's not. Uh, not at the moment. Uh, it, it, uh, it, at the time of this recording, it's uh, infected about 200 people. About 20% of them have died. So it's a, a dangerous virus if you catch it, um, but it's very difficult to catch. Uh, it has a very low R0 value. Um, uh, R to explain R0, actually, I'm going to kick it over to uh, Rose from Titanic. What we need to determine is this. For every person who gets sick, how many other people are they likely to infect? So, for seasonal flu, that's usually about one. Smallpox, on the other hand, it's over three. Now, before we had a vaccine, polio spread at a rate between four and six. Now, Baby. we call that number the r naught. <laughs> that was great, Rose. Thank you very much. Does it still feel like you're flying up there? Yeah, I'm sorry. I actually like Kate Winslet. She takes a lot of really cool roles. Um, yeah, so the R0 value for this new H7 and 9 strain seems like it's kind of zero. Um, people are not really getting it from other people. They've been getting it by interacting with animals. So um, without having that, that high R0 value, it's not going to turn into this spreading pandemic going everywhere. Unless you get, like, you know, chickens getting onto jumbo jets traveling all over the world. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Pandemics are usually waiting for a person to start transfer, transferring it everywhere. So so I don't think it's a, it's much to, to watch for. Um, should we keep an eye on it? Yeah, absolutely, because these things are always constantly evolving and changing. That's where H7 and 9 came from, is evolving from something else, and it will evolve into to something else. So well, we should keep an eye on the situation, but certainly not a panic moment at the moment. 
Um, what it is a great moment for is to just sort of think about, uh, would you be ready if this was the panic moment? Do you have your preps ready? For me, I've got gas masks um, like this. I've just got one of these really nice ones because it, uh, it's a good one for working in. It's also good for um, radiation. Uh, I've got one of those, but <coughs> mostly I just have uh, little uh, surgical masks, the little N95 surgical masks. Uh, if you're going to stock those, you should get a number of them. Um, uh, in addition to being a good barter item, <laughs> if you have plenty of them and, and, and nobody else can get them because there's like a, a, a scare. Um, they don't last forever. They start like, you know, filling up with like, you know, humidity and whatever junk and stuff. So uh, you're going to want to make sure that you, you know, have enough of those so you can swap out with those. Um, also, uh, in addition to just a uh, mask to keep virus from being inhaled by you, uh, you could go into, I've got a little list here. Um, <coughs> uh, if you want to like go a little further, you could get into a kind of a clean suit uh, thing where you could get some disposable clean suits. Um, uh, maybe, you know, some duct tape and gloves that you can uh, put on yourself. Um, even down to like a sprayer, like a little pump sprayer and uh, some bleach solution if you really want to clean things down. Um, and the, the use of that isn't that you're going to be like leaving your house in this like terrifying suit that would like freak everybody around you out with. Um, uh, what you probably want that for is like what if somebody in your family fell ill? Um, it would be a good idea for you to be able to take precautions for you and the rest of your family. Uh, do you have plastic sheeting? Or do you have the ability to kind of seal off a room in your house that can be a isolated zone for somebody? Uh, do you have an air filter that you could be running in there? Uh, you would want to create a, a negative pressure environment so that uh, air is flowing into that room but not coming out of that room. Well, it has to come out somewhere, but you would want to be filtering that air and then blowing that air outside, um, outside of your house. Um, I'm thinking more of in like a rural situation here. I, I think there'd be some ethical issues with blowing air outside of your house if you're in like you know, down the hall in your apartment complex. Um, but uh, you, you have the ability to kind of isolate an area of your house you could care for someone uh, and, and isolate your body uh, so that you could go in and you could care for that person and uh, with a diminished fear that you're going to yourself uh, become uh, sick with that. On top of that, um, do you have uh, items like vitamins uh, and uh, just basic sort of medications for uh, someone having a cold or a flu to help people through that, keep people hydrated, uh, keep people with proper nutrition. Those are things to stock up uh, on so that uh, so you can have all that stuff to have your immune system be as strong as it can be um, if something does come up. Have you thought much about that? What, what are your preps for uh, uh, the idea of a possible pandemic? What's your, what's your action plan for that? Mine is kind of a bug-in sort of thing. I live in a good area for that. Um, maybe you have uh, a different idea in mind. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.